All right, everyone, we start off today with Twitter files part four. Yes, the uh, fourth uh, doc, uh, document dump has been made. Uh, this time it's going through Schellenberg. Uh, so you've now had three people uh, involved with the actual releases. I like that aspect of this because Musk isn't playing favorites and just going through one journal on site. And these are people that are sort of like part of what you could call the dissident journalist community. So Elon Musk has had hit pieces made against him over the last couple of weeks by going through these individuals instead of giving the documents to WAPO or the New York Times or something so that they can do exactly what they did with their initial reporting. They can spin it, talk about how it's overhyped and meaningless. We already knew this. It's a nothing burger. Yawn. Go back to sleep, everyone. Uh, I think that's wise. I also think that it's wise that they're making it more digestible for the public by putting it in Twitter, uh, Twitter notes and, and threads and shit like that, making it more terse. Uh, not simply overloading everyone with tens of thousands of pages of Slack documents and emails and shit like that. And what we're beginning to see is the tangled web about how Twitter, prior at least, uh, has operated in the moderation capacity. This is fairly intriguing, what we've got in document dump number four here. Uh, the too long didn't read version is essentially this in a nutshell. Jack Dorsey was out to lunch, literally at one point, was vacationing and effectively handed the control of the site writ large to Yoel Roth and to a few other people and, and he's in trouble for separate things at the moment because he's made weird posts on the site. He's out of Twitter, thankfully, um, deservedly. Uh, if you read his thesis, it's uh, there are some concerning aspects to that, uh, just to be clear. And Musk is weighing in directly on a former employee, uh, having uh, said weird shit and <laughs> maybe not been the most scrupulous of characters. Just to be clear about Yoel Roth, he's getting dragged by what could have been his boss if he had fucking done his job. Probably be looking at a raise. We're looking at several concerning things here. Number one, according to internal conversations, again, these involve higher-ups at Twitter. Not Dorsey himself, although he's weighing in on these things. It seems like we're actually getting a picture of Dorsey that slightly redeems him. Yeah, he effectively lied to the site's user base. I'm not going to forgive him for that. Yeah, he is a censorious, sanctimonious prick. That's true. But it appears that at the very least, towards the, the 2016-2020 election period, when all hell breaks loose, it appears that he was the reluctant one uh, in these things and, and had tried to tamp down on it. Unfortunately, he can't be expected to do what Elon Musk does and set up a bedroom and literally live there micromanaging everything, and so Yoel Roth and others ran roughshod over the concept of liberty. They were in, number one, direct and constant communication with the FBI, DOJ, and other officials. Weekly meetings, um, that's number one. No, and, I, and I'm sure that other big tech firms, by the way, even more worrisome, do the same thing. To be clear, this is happening at YouTube. I have talked to insiders that have worked directly with Google uh, on algorithms on several occasions. They will vouch for the fact that, yes, uh, Google services do operate in the same capacity. They have the same algorithms. They use the same kind of shadow bans. The influence goes further. We know that it affects uh, Meta, Zuckerberg coming out over a month ago on Joe Rogan talking about the same thing. All of the mainline communications firms that have any significance at all, other than the new tech ones, which sometimes aren't even U.S. based, are compromised by the U.S. government explicitly. To be clear, some of this influence is political in nature. Point number two, we're finding a pattern uh, by Roth and by other employees at Twitter in the past in which they randomly ignored the TOS on site, including in the case of Trump, uh, where they complained, well, we can't ban him, he's not done anything wrong. But hey, you know, mm, we'll just rescind that policy on elected officials and now he's just a normie and we just don't like him, so fuck him, we're banning him off the site, even though there was clearly no actual insurrection on J6. They targeted Matt Gates. Um, we're seeing that as well. Um, he is explicitly mentioned there. <laughs> just to be clear, again, another sitting politician, a taxpayer-funded, currently in office individual, I think up for election at the time, uh, was almost banned off of Twitter as well. They did this to Marjorie Taylor Greene. And lopsidedly, this is done to people who are dissident community members, content creators that don't have the corporate contract, politicians who are outside of the 
GOPE slash neoliberal core, including some leftoids. I see the same complaints, by the way, from some left-wingers right now. Well, Twitter also targeted progressives. Okay, so it's exactly like the IRS scandal. Yeah, agreed. Progressives are outside of the lexicon of the neolib neocon core uniparty, which pushes this kind of censorship and is pushing this country dangerously close into being somewhat less than a functioning constitutional republic. Yet you people are simping for the Biden admin for doing explicitly the same thing. You seem to have no problem with it. Yet you're bitching about the censorship existing, and then you make the weird claim, well, those right-wing accounts, though, were properly banned. It's the left-wing accounts that shouldn't be, you know, Antifa accounts and stuff. Goodness, they're finally cracking down on accounts that are uh, objectively and publicly engaging in potentially uh, illegal behavior by inciting violence. And I don't mean inciting violence like people acted violent in your name despite you not calling for violence, like with Trump, who's been restored. I'm talking about them getting together with the explicit goal of committing arson and things like that. Yeah, they should be banned. Hell, it should be referred to the authorities, although we know that the authorities in Portland aren't going to do anything about it. They'll slap them on the wrist and say, next time, don't get caught. Next time, use NordVPN or something like that. We've got shenanigans up and down this release. The differential enforcement, which is something I've been talking about now for the better part of a decade, is the main crux of the problem, though. The problem was not the rules. Although they are over-onerous, uh, they are over-burdensome, and many of them shouldn't exist on any tech platform. They are the modern public square. Free speech should be respected. We should all be pressuring the government to take a hands-off approach to that speech and the corporations to uh, uh, abide by 230's uh, spirit the actual goal of why it was signed off on, in order to preserve the First Amendment. I consider it to be intellectually treasonous, if not legally treasonous, to oppose the existence of free speech in the United States. I think we should be fighting for more free speech in other parts of the world as well. By the way, the idea of these tech firms being pressured by Europe, why doesn't the U.S. government do something diplomatically to tell them to fuck off because the firms don't, aren't based in their country? Hey, you've got your rules. Go ahead and impose them on your users. U.S. users are going to be free to air their grievances. You want to wall off the European Union from Twitter or something, we don't give a damn. Go ahead and make your clone and see how long it lasts because half your users will just get on a VPN. Even if you make it illegal for them to do so. Eh, Europe would love to do so. Go ahead and create an intranet. If, you're, if your fifis are hurt, then go the fuck away. We're finding that differential enforcement as predicted for years by yours truly, is the real problem here, though. They ignored their own TOS. Admittedly, they self-admit to the fact that they're banning people and suppressing things that aren't even outside of their own rules. And they're doing so in a completely opaque manner. In some cases, without the, without the permission, it seems, of even Jack Dorsey, the person running the goddamn site. And they did this in coordination with intel agencies and government officials. Now, if that were limited, in the FBI's scope of, of operations, I don't think it needs to exist at all, but insofar as it exists, it's supposed to catch the bad guy. It's obviously a pipe dream. Most often they're not doing that. They're attempting to get some autistic kid to buy a fake pipe bomb so they can put him in jail for 20 years and continue to talk about how brave they are stopping evil terrorists, which didn't work at the Boston Marathon or many other instances, but it definitely works with autistic 12-year-olds who have a grievance against their mother and want to buy a pipe bomb. Lots of them in federal prison, I'm sure. Uh, it's entrapment, to be clear. Often successfully argued, by the way. <laughs> they tend to target people who are a little out there. Wonder why. Gotta get that perp quota. And the, here's the thing, though. If the FBI were talking to Twitter and saying, look, there's illicit porn on your site, you need to do something, I don't have a problem with that. That's illegal. That's in the scope of your operations. But when they're showing up to say, well, there's disinfo on your site, who cares? It's not any of your business. It doesn't matter if there's foreign state propaganda on Twitter. People are going to dogpile it anyway. That's how a proper public square works. You spread state propaganda on Twitter, you're, you're willfully talking to the people running the site and having them promote material that is amenable to your neoliberal agenda. Well, that's propaganda. It's disinfo. It's not honest. It's, it's astroturfing at the bare minimum. In many cases, it's outright bullshit. Like the concept that Hunter Biden's laptop was a Russian disinfo campaign itself was disinfo. But you fed it to these sites. You told Twitter that. You winked and nodded and told Zuckerberg that. I'm sure there were conversations with Apple and Google and other groups as well. 
probably with, with fiscal uh, PayPal, I'm sure is involved with this, all of the others. Hell, the ISPs may have been contacted. Hey, we're noticing some connections to this server through Russia. You need to do something about that. Cut off their service. I wouldn't be surprised if common carrier laws were violated at some point uh, over the last few years based on what we've seen. The deplatforming agenda, the censorship campaigns are all horseshit. Elon Musk, again, not a member of his warship cult, to his credit, is doing a good job at revealing this. And, and again, the slow drip methodology that's rankling some people, well, just give us all the info now. You don't understand. That's, that's what the journalists want. When I see like Tim Pool, Tim Pool, when he analyzes it, he says, well, it's frustrating. That's because you're more on the journalistic side. You've got to understand the average person doesn't have the stamina to go through that much material. And if it's all dumped at once, what will happen is you'll analyze it and you'll say there's fishy shit. I'll analyze it and say there's fishy shit. H.A. Goodman will say there's fishy shit. Steven Crowder will do a special and he'll say, oh, look at all the Twitter revelations. That's the problem, though. We only represent one aspect of journalism on the analytical end, mostly for many of us. We don't represent the soccer mom crowd that watches CNN and stuff like that. It's much better to do a dump a little bit at a time so that you can potentially catch the, the lies of the Biden admin, former Twitter officials, FBI is involved, maybe them. Let them come out and make statements saying, well, yes, we're really, really sorry, but it doesn't extend any further than this. This is all that we did. There's nothing more to see. And then you expose them afterwards by saying, yeah, there's more to see. That's the whole goal. They're trying to entrap uh, the uh, powers that be right now. We'll see if they take the bait. That's about all. Peace out.